In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into all the different kinds of brushes in Adobe Fresco, when you would use them, when you wouldn't use them. We'll talk about the different settings, the different options. I'll talk about what's available in the free version versus the premium version. But we're just gonna have so much fun with brushes today. All right, so what are these three categories of brushes? Number one is pixel-based brushes. These are the most common type of digital brush. This is what you would find in other apps like Procreate. These are basically just a graphic turned into a brush and there's endless possibilities. These are the ones that I use the most because you have the most control, but they are pixel-based, so they are limited to whatever resolution that you are working in. For me, this usually isn't much of an issue because I prefer working at a, a larger document size, but I'll talk about that a little bit more afterwards. The second category of brushes is also pixel-based. These are pretty unique to Adobe Fresco. These are called live brushes. The reason they're called live brushes is because they are meant to emulate watercolor and oil painting, wherein the image that you create stays active so that you can go in and like blend colors and use water and mix things. And I'll show you in a little bit, don't worry about it. The third category of brushes is one that is important to me. These are the vector brushes. If you're not familiar with vector artwork, I have a whole video that talks all about it that you can watch afterwards. I will link that below. But the gist of it is vector artwork is not based in pixels. It is based in points and curves and magical mathematics. The benefit to this is that it's infinitely scalable and it does not lose its quality no matter what. I'm often asked, why, hey, wouldn't, why you just... wouldn't you just use vector for everything? Seems much better, TBH. I really only use vector artwork if it's something that is going to be, you know, printed massive or if it's some sort of branding item or logo or packaging that needs to be really flexible or something that requires it for production reasons. But most of the time, my pixel-based artwork files are much larger than they would need to be to be printed at whatever size that I need to print them at. For example, if I'm just drawing for fun and I don't have a intended purpose for that artwork, like some sort of reason for it to be produced, I still work at around 5,000 pixels wide. And that translates to around 16 inches at 300 DPI. So even if I decide, oh, I do want to print this or make a shirt out of, or out of it or something like that, it's still big enough to do that. The resolution issue with pixel brushes happens when you're working at an image size that really isn't big enough. And when you're working at those smaller sizes, you don't really have as much control over the brush because there's not enough pixels to really use it to its full potential. So I recommend starting at a minimum of like 4,000 pixels for your image and you'll have much better control over your pixel brushes and won't have to worry about that resolution issue unless you need to print them at just a massive size. You probably know that going into it and maybe choose vector accordingly. All right, let's dive into the pixel brushes. I'm currently using the free version of Adobe Fresco because I know that some of you are also using the free version and also just show you that you, you can absolutely get by with the free version of Adobe Fresco. So when you look over at your toolbar, the first option at the very top is the pixel based brushes. You'll notice there's a little icon. It's like a circle with a bunch of little dots to represent pixels. Whenever you are working in pixel brushes, you will have a pixel based layer. And if we start working in vector brushes, it'll automatically make a new layer that is vector based. This is how they're able to incorporate both raster or pixel based workflows and vector based workflows in the same document. But we're not gonna worry about layers right now. The next video in this series is gonna do a deep dive on layers. So stay tuned for that one or watch it after this one. So let's tap on the pixel brush. And here you will be greeted with a whole bunch of different categories of brushes. You will however notice that some of these brushes have a little blue circle with a star in it. That means it's not included in the free version. So sadly you can't use those unless you upgrade. But if you did wanna upgrade, it's only $9.99 per year for Fresco if you just go into the app store. And that gives you unlimited brushes. You can download all of Kyle Webster's brushes for free or no additional charge. And you can import your, your own brushes. And they give you a little bit more creative cloud storage space. But again, there's a lot of great brushes in here. All of these brushes are made by Kyle Webster anyway. And he's one of the best to ever do it. Before Fresco even existed, I was buying Kyle's brushes to use in Photoshop. How many videos have I shouted Kyle out in? All right, so in this menu, the first thing you see is recent. And this just grabs whatever recent brushes you were using. This is pretty helpful because maybe you're trying out a whole bunch of brushes and you liked one and you forgot the name of it. You can just go in there 
and say, oh, there's the brush I was using. Easy as that. The next one is the basic brushes. These are just the most basic brushes. I mean, they're basic. The hard round brush is the most simple of all simple brushes. Basically, it's just a big circle. You tap, it's a circle, and then it's a big fat line. There's no pressure sensitivity, no nothing. I like to have a basic hard round brush saved at just a massive size, as big as it'll go. And I use this if I need to fill enough space very quickly, or if I'm using like alpha lock on a layer to recolor something. This way I can just kind of swipe twice, whole screen's filled, pretty great. To save a brush to your favorites like that, all you do is hit this little star, and then it adds it into your favorites, and then you go in your favorite tab, and there it is. And it saves it at that size that you were using it at. So I'm not gonna go through each one of these. They're pretty straightforward. For example, charcoal brushes are meant to look like charcoal. They also are a great brush to make some texture because there's texture built into it. If we grab this uh, charcoal pencil, blow it up a little bit, you can see that there's just like kind of a good gritty texture to it that you can you could use to add a little bit of grit to your, your image. Same goes for the dry media section. We've got a, a Conti crayon, which has got some nice grit to it. This hard pastel one is a nice one that you can use to get some grit into your color if that's what you're looking for. Or even line work, you can make it small, do some line work with that gritty line. The ink category has a whole plethora of brushes that are great for line work. I'll show you some of my favorites in a bit. If you're a painter, the mixer brushes will be helpful for you if you wanna blend colors. Let's grab this softy mixer, paint in some yellow. So I'll come in here and grab like a, a red and then can just paint over this and mix these together make a nice orange. There's a unique feature to these mixer brushes and you can find that in the brush submenu. That is down here. You can actually drag this and move it wherever you want. Here you'll find some more options and more control over the brushes. First one is the brush size. And then the second one is like the flow. So you bring it down, brings down the opacity. And the next two I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. And then below that is this other little menu. And this is where you'll find these special mixer settings. So if you go under mixing, you'll see this option that is a reload color. So what this does is that it allows you to mix colors, but then when you go to draw again, it goes back to the color that you had initially specced. However, if you turn this off and come over here, we've got red, and then I start mixing these two together, I get this orange color. Now, when I draw, I've got this like mix of, of paint. So it emulates what would happen if you actually had paint on your brush. You can go back in and put that back to reload. And now you come in here, we got this orangey color, but then when I start painting again, it goes right back to that dark red. Pretty neat. The next category is a really fun one. These are multicolor brushes. Here you'll find a whole bunch of pre-made ones that you can use, but I'll show you how you can make your own multicolor brushes in just a minute. But let me show you what these things are. So if you look over here at your swatch, you'll see this little spiral yellowy orange thing. And then when we draw with it, we got like a, a cheese line. Look at this cheese. Let's try another one. Rainbow sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at that, it's adorable. Look at this chain, ready? Can you believe it? All right, let's start with something with a little bit of texture. Let's go to the dry media and let's grab, I don't know, this blue color. Okay, we got that. Now let's add some other texture to it, maybe a little dark area. Make the brush size a little bit bigger so we can get some more texture. Quick little pro tip. If you just tap and hold, you can eyedropper a color. So I wanna get some white, so I'm just gonna tap and hold on the artboard to get that white. And then I can come over here and just add in this little highlight. Whatever this is, we're gonna turn it into a brush and it'll be cooler. Promise. So all we're gonna do now is zoom out a little bit. I double tap this little circle. This is called the modifier. I have a whole other video about that. I will link below, I'll link up here, but don't watch it right now. Watch it after this. We got a lot of talk about still. We haven't even gotten to the other brushes. Modifier, double tapped. You'll notice it's double tapped because there will be blue in the center of that circle. And now we are going to tap and hold, just like we did to use the eyedropper. But you'll notice something happening when you look over at your swatches you'll see that there's multicolors there. Let's grab this thick to thin from the inking set. What? Look at this. Can you believe it? Look at this wild 3D line that we made. Look at it. Isn't that fun? What you can do now 
is go into your little brush submenu, tap on the dots next to the name of the brush, and we can go to save as new brush, and we can name it toothpaste. So now when you go into your brush menu, if you go down below to my library, you'll see your toothpaste brush is right there. And you could also add it to your favorites if you want. And you go in your favorites and your little special toothbrush paste. Toothbrush, toothpaste brush. All right, there. All right, now let's talk about how you can adjust these brushes a little bit to your preferences and get them to work exactly how you want them to. So I went in and saved to my favorites some of the brushes available in the free version that I thought would work well with my style. And I'll show you how I can fine tune these a little bit more to get them to work even better for me. So the first one I've selected is the Classic Comics Nib. For reference, my document is set up at 5,000 by 4,000 pixels. This is at 36 pixels for this brush size. I like this brush because it has good thicks and thin. It's a little bit more than I like, and that's something that we can adjust pretty easily. So if we go into this last option on the little sub menu, this is where you will see our control settings. So the spacing is something that I don't want to adjust because I like it the way it is, but what this does is it sort of spaces out the stamp or image that makes the brush. So if you space it all the way out, you'll see it turns into dots because those are the individual graphics that make up this brush. And then the angle is the angle of how it's drawn. So it's not that noticeable here because it's more of a a round brush, but if you had a very square brush, that would be more noticeable. Under blend mode, I like it at normal, but these options would work well if you're doing, wanted something that was color that would sort of blend and transfer over other colors. That's a little bit more complicated than we want to get into here for this, and I'm talking about this as a liner brush, so normal is good there. So if we go into this shape dynamics submenu, we've got some more options here. So the size jitter is how much the size changes as you're drawing. So for example, if we pulled this up to 100, you can actually try the brushes up here, but you can see that it sort of changes really dramatically. And if you feel like you mess something up and you wanna go back, you can always hit this thing at the bottom to revert to the original settings. So below size jitter, you will see pen tilt for the control. So I like to put this on pen pressure, and then I can easily control the thicks and thins by how light or how hard I'm pressing. And then we've got minimum diameter and angle jitter. So these are all just ways that you can sort of customize this. So if we bring this up to like 100%, you'll see that there's no hardly any variation at all because the minimum diameter is up so high. If you put it at 50, you'll see it's a little bit more subtle. And I think this is more in line with what I like I don't like it to get so thin. I like a subtle amount of change in my line weight. And then you can also use another setting like pen tilt to control the like the, the jitter of the texture. This is a way to make it look more authentic, more realistic, because it's constantly changing based on the subtle angle of your, your brush stroke. So I think that's a, a nice thing to have. And then at the bottom, there's a stylus pressure thing, and you can just tweak this to whatever works best for the way you draw. And there's like a little test area over here. And this is not specific to the brush. This is just like your style pressure overall. If you have like a thicker screen protector and you feel like it's affecting the way you draw, you could bring down the pressure to light so you're not, it like evens out. These other options like scattering or transfer are a little bit more advanced stuff that you would mess with if you were completely changing the brush. I'm just tweaking this a little bit because I already like the brush. I just want to make it a little bit better for me. So with those settings, this looks pretty in line with what I like and I would be happy to draw with this. So there's one thing that I do to ensure that my lines are nice and smooth when I need them to be, and that is the smoothing option. So if you look on your submenu, the little wiggly line in the middle, this is your smoothing. So it defaults to one in most cases, and then you can bring it all the way up to 100. Procreate has something similar, but it's tied into the specific brushes and it's called the streamline effect. You'll notice a brush has a lot of streamline in Procreate if you're using it and it sort of like feels slow and almost like you're pulling a string over lines or something like that because it's like cleaning up as you go. Smoothing is a similar thing, it just does it a little bit differently. Some people might interpret it as a lag if you have it turned up all the way. It's not a lag, it's just smoothing out your line as you're drawing it. In my workflow, when I'm sketching and like figuring things out, I usually have the smoothing all the way off 
so that I can draw very quickly. But when I'm doing my tightened up line work, tracing over something, I like that smoothing all the way up unless I'm doing something very angular because it just allows me to get really nice clean lines. So if I crank this up to 100, I can get just really nice, clean, flowy lines, and it's just delightful. If I wanted to do something quick and angular, it becomes tricky because it starts to get rounded off because of that smoothing. What I can do is just come in here, bring that back down to zero, and then I can get as you know angular and fast as I want to. That's another small reason why I prefer Fresco. In order to get this same effect, in Procreate, I would have to have two different brushes. This guy's a real Procreate hater. They'd be the same, except the streamline would be up on one and it would be down on the other. And then it would just be like the two extremes. Sometimes I want like a middle ground, so I could put this like halfway up and then I would have the ability to get smoother lines, but then also kind of get angular as well without too much compromise. So if you've adjusted your settings and you are happy with them and you want to keep them, what you can do is go over here to these three dots next to the name of the brush, save as new brush, and then you could name it whatever you want. My classic comic snib. We save. Now when we go over to our library, you'll see we've got our new custom brush and our toothpaste brush. And now I could come over here to the original one and just remove that from my favorites by tapping the star because I don't want that one anymore. Okay, this last setting over here that we didn't talk about yet, this is called Paint Inside. And when Paint Inside is on, it will only draw within your other drawing. It's sort of like alpha lock in the layers. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll cover it in my layers video. You can watch that after. Let me show you how it works. So if I come over here and tap this Paint Inside on, you'll see that I can color and it will stay within that line. However, if I lift, I can draw over here which is pretty neat. You can also use this to like add a little bit of texture. Let's grab the hard pastel. And now I can come in here and just like add this texture to that, that line. You could do it with like a, a darker color and add some of that texture and it will lock it within that line work as you're coloring. Pretty neat. All right, let's talk about these living, breathing brushes. Are they really alive? Oh, God. <laughs> Tap on the second option. It's got the little water droplet. Now these are also pixel based, as I mentioned earlier, but they have a little bit of magic power to them. There's two options. We've got watercolor and we've got oil. Watercolor brushes emulate using watercolors in real life. Oil brushes do the same for oil. You can also mix them together. But let's just grab this watercolor soft brush. Let's choose a color, grab this red color, and we just paint. You'll see it's a little bit lighter. But if we bring it down to zero, we can get a a darker, more saturated red. Let's put this back in the middle. In this section, you can kind of control things just as you would otherwise, and you can test it out up here. You could put on the scatter thing and see how wild that changes things. You can control pressure, flow, all this stuff. It's pretty great. This also has a new feature that we haven't seen, and this is the velocity dynamics. And this controls the amount of size, like the size and the flow of the paint based on how fast you draw that line. So for example, if we turn this size up and the flow up, and then we draw slow, then we draw fast, you'll see it faster we draw, the more I hit the microphone. I'm gonna reset that again, just tap that little arrow thing at the bottom to reset back to where you originally were. And then let's quickly uh, show you what happens when you use these things. So I can paint here, I can paint on top. Another thing that you can do is double tap the modifier, and this allows you to paint with just water. So you can use this to sort of blend things even more and just pull color because you're just using water to do it, which is kind of cool. And then the oil brushes, and if you zoom in, you can see that there's like actual paint, a little bit of canvas texture to it. Now, the oil brushes have that same quality the mixer ones do, where you can set it to reload the color or use a new color that you've created from mixing like this. If you like make a nice purple color and then come in here and say, let's keep that. So when I'm doing this, now when I draw, I'm using that new purple color. Or I come over here and I mix it again, start to get a more blue purple. And now we've got that color. 
and then you can start mixing those together. Pretty cool. Now, if I'm being completely honest, these are not brushes that I use all the time. I'm not a painter, but there is a fun way to use these if you're like me, but still want to experiment with it, but you want a little bit more control. Got this little drawing here of Muckman from the Ninja Turtles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a selection of this shape. So I'm just gonna use the magic wand tool and just tap the empty areas here. So right now I have the background fully selected. What I'm gonna do is click on more at the bottom and then invert the selection and that's just gonna give me a selection of that face. So I'm gonna click on the layer below that and I'm just gonna fill that in with the paint bucket. Now it's a little bit hard to see what I did there, but let me go ahead and put a color layer behind that just so you can see what happened. All right, so now you see the interior of that shape is filled in with white. So what we can do is make a new layer and set this to be a clipping mask of the layer below, meaning it'll only show up in the areas tied to that layer below. Again, this is a little bit beyond the brush category, but it's just a quick tip and I'm gonna go into this more detail in my layers video. So if we just tap this little square with an arrow, so now that we've got that constraint, we can come back over to the watercolor brushes, get a slimy green color here, we can start painting in, and then we can get that watercolor look, but it'll be confined to that shape because we have it on a clipping mask. This can be a fun way to sort of get that painterly look, use it to add a little shadow under the eyes. We wanna make these eyes maybe uh, yellow, we can come in here and do that, and still have some of that green in there if you wanted to just have, give it an overall tone of that. And you could just keep like mixing things in and like get that soft watercolor look combined with the line work. You can even go totally wild and start doing this with like the oil brushes too. And then you can sort of blend it all in. I told you I'm not a painter. So last, but certainly not least, at least in my book, are the vector brushes. This is the third one down. If you tap on this, you'll see we've got four categories of different styles of vector brushes. We've got basic, jitter, manga, and outline. Now before I made my own custom vector presets, which I'll talk about in a minute, I was pretty much just using a slightly tweaked version of the basic round brush. So if we come into basic and then choose the round, I will show you what this brush is like. So this is a pretty simple, nice, clean brush that has some good pressure sensitivity. We can get some real thin lines, some thick lines, and it's, I think it's great. The only thing I don't love about this brush is one of the settings which is called velocity dynamics. And this changes the line based on how fast you draw it. I prefer my line to maintain its size no matter how fast or slow I'm drawing it. And the difference in size I want to come from the amount of pressure that I use while I'm drawing. So this is an easy fix. All I did was come in here to the brush settings and then just uncheck velocity dynamics. So if you just need a simple, clean vector inking brush, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. It's uh, pretty great. That's a terrible face, should I reshoot it? The sub menu controls for vector brushes are mostly the same as the pixel brushes, but there are a couple other things that are unique, such as the taper mode. There's two options, there's length and velocity. That can, that's based on how quickly you draw it for velocity and length is just how long the taper lasts into your line. On this brush, the taper is turned off and that's my preference. I don't like to have a taper on my brush. I like to make my own taper based on how heavy or light I'm pushing. I'll just lift up a little bit at the end to taper a line or go in lighter and then push heavier to get taper as I'm going, but I don't want it there at all times. For example, if I was drawing something like a circle for an eye like this, I want it to stay pretty consistent. If I'm gonna do like a, a little thing under the eye like that, I might want a little bit of taper. A little bonus tip for the vector brushes, you can double tap the modifier and then again to get the blue on the outer circle. And this will allow you to just draw through things you don't want and it is oh so good. And speaking of that, something that I should have mentioned in the pixel brushes, but I didn't, is that with the modifier, when you double tap it so that the blue circle is in the center, that lets you use any brush as an eraser. It's not as big of a deal with the vector brushes when you're using something with a clean line like this, but when you're doing something with texture, it's a, a real lifesaver. I don't think I ever use the actual eraser tool. So I got this grungy brush and let's say I was drawing a sweet skull 
like this, putting some eyeballs in, eye holes, eye sockets, like that. And I was like, uh, why did those teeth go all the way up into the nose line? That doesn't make any sense. So if I just grabbed the eraser, started erasing that, you'll see it's all nice and clean. And I'd have to like redraw all of that. But if instead I just stay within this brush and I double tap the modifier, I can come in here and erase with that same texture. And it's not gonna give me the those artificial erase lines that don't match the brush I'm using. So you can also use the modifier by just holding. So if I just hold the modifier down, I could come in and like erase an area out of it like that. Pretty handy. Back to vector. Those are the uh, taper settings. You can add taper if you want to. Control how long it is. You basically just pull this to start at the beginning one. You can have one at the beginning, you could have one at the end, whatever you wanna do. Pressure dynamics is the same as the other brushes. Also stylus pressure. Again, that's like a universal thing that you can control. And then shape and outline here. And this was where you could add like a jitter, which is kind of makes the line a little bit shaky. And that's how you would have sort of a, a textured look. This is a little bit more complicated and I did a whole video on this. So I will link that at the end if you wanna check that out, if you wanna learn how to make your own custom vector brush presets. Using that jitter effect to change the, the line and make it sort of undulate up and down. And then mixing that with like the angle and the pressure and all that kind of stuff. I made a set of gritty textury brushes to use here. They're actually brush presets because you can't import vector brushes into Fresco, but you can add presets, which is sort of similar. These are my gritty brush presets, which are available in my shop. I'll link below if you're interested, or you can watch the video after this to learn how to make your own. But as you can see here, it's got a nice sort of uh, ink bleedy look, almost like a Sharpie or something like that. This is what I do the majority of my line work in if I'm working in vector. The vector brushes also have the paint inside feature. Go right inside that if you want to, and then, you know, color outside. Wherever you start is where it'll keep you in. I could start on the outside and then it wouldn't let me go over that line work, which is also a handy feature. Aside from being vector, one thing that makes these brushes unique is that they have an outline option. So if you go into your settings here and you go into shape and outline, you could turn on outline and then you'll notice here that we've got two different colors that show up. You can control the, the texture in there and then you can come up here and change the color. So you could put like yellow on the inside here or you can flip them like this. So then when you draw with this, you'll see you get a, a nice cool outline brush. In my crispy vector preset one, I have this, uh, this one that's kind of fun for lettering. It's like almost like a, a ribbon look and it's got this thin inset line and then you can change those colors there. It's a fun one to do some lettering with. It's got like a almost 3D effect to it. And then one other thing that I have to mention is that if you do have the premium version of Fresco, whether you have Creative Cloud or you're paying $9.99 a year for the premium single version of Fresco, you have access to all of Kyle Webster's brushes that he's adding to all the time, which is wild. So let me just show you how to access those. It's very simple. If you're in the pixel brushes, you go down to the bottom to add brushes. And here you can go to discover new brushes. And if you look here, you can just get any of these brushes. Keith Haring inspired brushes, dry media, more of those, runny inkers, manga brushes, more letters, photocopier, charcoal, watercolor. There's tons. And he is doing new ones all the time. Here's winter 2024 brushes. Those are new, pretty neat. And then another important thing to know is that Fresco uses Photoshop brushes. So any Photoshop brushes you may have or any brushes that you might be interested in getting somewhere almost always will be available in Photoshop because that's the most popular kind of brush out there. People have been making Photoshop brushes for 30 years or something. You can add those in the same way. You just need to save the file somewhere you have access to from your iPad or on a drive that you plug into your iPad. And then you just go to add brushes and then import from files. Then you just grab them here and then they will be added right in. Easy peasy, brushy squeezy. So at this point, you either wanna make your own custom presets or you might wanna do a deep dive onto layers. If so, I got two videos popping up right here. You can choose your own adventure. Have some fun. This has been a good talk. Can't do shenanigans. This is a YouTube video. This is very serious. No more silly stuff.